Hey guys, have you ever wondered what would happen if you combined the Power Rangers with Beast Wars? Well, if you think that that would be totally awesome, spoiler alert, it's not. This is Vampires. Vampires is a TV show from 1997 that was, well, just watch the intro. When a mysterious meteor crashes into a lonely junkyard, derelict vans and cars take on human-like life. The vampires suck the gas from innocent cars to feed their need for speed and drain the planet of all its fuel. Only four teenagers, transformed by the meteor, stand between the vampires and a world sucked dry and running on empty. Part team, part car, all hero. The motivators must fight the night to save the day. So check your fear and get in gear. The vampires are here. Yes. This was actually a thing. A meteor crashes to Earth and has some kind of weird energy that turns cars into gasoline-sucking robot vampires and four teenagers with attitude into gasoline-sucking robots. And for some reason it turns a big wheel into a dog and a toilet into a comic relief character. Something smells rotten here! <laughs> so I guess this is what happens when you're writing a script while high on gasoline fumes. There's also this weird thing that looks like a cross between a skateboard, a toaster, and a desk fan. Oh god, it's a mishmash! Anyway, the vampires are led by Tracula in their quest to consume all of Earth's fuel, and to, you guessed it, take over the world. Of course! And he's joined by a hearse named Cardaver, an ambulance named Ambula, and an ice cream truck named Automaniac. And as you've noticed, this animation is not exactly what it could be. Again, this show was made in 1997. Let's take a look at some of the rival computer animation of the day, shall we? Point goes to the awesomeness of Mainframe. But as hard as it is to watch their unimaginative designs, seriously, they're making the GoBots look more badass. At least their scenes are kind of entertaining. Stroke of sheer genius! Tonight, Cardava, the vampires go nationwide! And the ranks of the vampires will swell to millions! Track trillions! Ah! <laughs> but then maybe they're kind of entertaining only because they're more concerned with actually advancing the plot, as opposed to the motivators, <laughs> who seem to be more interested in saying dialogue that consists almost entirely of car puns. Put the brakes on here. What happened to uh, get wrenched in? I don't need no backseat drivers. Someone's running in the red zone. Your motor's overheating, They're girl. Definitely grinding gears now. Girl, you better come up for air and let the boys under the hood take care of this yeah. one. I guess this is what would happen if 90s kid got a career in auto maintenance. And what are these kids' names, you might be wondering? Their names are Axel, Snap, Nuke, and Rev. Wow, those are some mighty stupid parents that they had. And of course their names reflect their personalities just perfectly. Like Rev, the token tomboy, Snap, the token black guy, Nuke, the token overweight guy, and Axel, the token decent looking white guy lead whose only interesting thing is that he has an X in his name. They all hang out in a junkyard, because all kids hung out in junkyards in the 90s I guess, along with... Gary Oldman? I know. I'm surprised that the low point in his career predates the Lost in Space movie, too. Actually, this is Van Helsing, get it? He's the owner of this junkyard, I guess, but he seems less concerned with actually running the junkyard, and more concerned with spouting off pseudo-hippie-like ramblings. Look, the establishment decrees no more vinyl, and everyone just lies down and accepts it. That rumble wasn't from my stereo. Uh. 
Daddy O. Don't panic. It's a hundred percent organic. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Speaking of which, this hippie seems to enjoy wearing a lot of the red, white, and blue. So he's a pro-establishment radical hippie, I guess. And no, it's never explained why these kids are hanging out with this old pothead. I mean, if they all share an enthusiasm for cars, that's fine, I get that. But why not just go to this place to buy a car and then fix it up at home? Hey, I'm looking for a car to fix up with my friends here. Do you think you can hook us up, dude? Aw, oh, dig this, man! If you want to fix cars, you gotta hang out with me, man! I've got all the right tools that you'll need, I've got all the latest hits on vinyl, and I've got the one thing that you can't get at home. Love, man. Uh, I'm not supposed to be accepting love from old men. I've got some serious hash in the back. Ah, oh, awesome! I'll go get my friends! But to be fair, this show does deal with some pretty difficult issues. Like, what are you supposed to do if you're working on a car, and your friends, who obviously have known you for years, are belittling you because they somehow think that you don't know how to work on a car because you're a girl? I know what I'm doing here, lug nuts! Looks like Those guys think they know everything just because they're guys. The answer? Look for new friends. You don't need to be wasting your time with people who are either clearly idiots, or are just poorly written. Speaking of poorly written, look at this. In one episode, we see a commercial for a local car dealership, and what do we see in the background? So if your budget is tight, I keep on the light, cause we're roping all night. No. It can't be. Dracula! He's at that used car lot! Yep, this commercial has a giant metallic monster in the background, and it somehow made it to air with nobody noticing. Or maybe they just mistook it for a giant inflatable gorilla or something. But yeah, the vampires' MO is not only to suck up all the gasoline that they can find, but also to overrun the entire world with new vampires. And this only makes me beg the question, what are they supposed to do when they achieve that goal? They don't seem concerned with making new gasoline supplies, so what are they going to do if humanity is dead and there's nothing left but vampires? Are they just going to keep on sucking each other? Well, okay, actually, that does make a whole lot of sense now that I think about it. After all, this show already is on perpetual suck. Well, okay, there is one episode where Car Daver creates a machine that turns organic life into gasoline, but naturally, such a useful device is quickly forgotten in subsequent episodes. But I guess it'd be pointless for them to try to use it again anyway, since the Motorvaders would never allow them to do so, thanks to their awesome arsenal of... Um... Nothing. They defeat the vampires by manually removing their fuel lines, which works, but it seems a little risky to get in that close to them. You can't shoot them with silver crossbows or super soakers filled with holy water, or hey, if you want to go with the whole car theme, you can't throw garlic-scented air fresheners at them? You don't have any weapons at your disposal? I'm not kidding here. Their only abilities are flight, and I can only assume super strength. But other than that, they've got nothing. They can't even use their vampirism to their advantage, like maybe sucking the life out of their enemies or something. By the way, you know how the vampires actually turn into cars? The motivators do not. They just turn into these vaguely car-like robots, and... That's it! Also, you know how the Power Rangers morphed thanks to magical belt buckles, right? Wanna know how the motivators change? They each go into their own respective car, and when they come out, transformation complete! And actually, as far as practical means of transformation goes, that's not exactly a bad way of doing it. Here, check this out. Now, I just went into my bed, and when I came out, I suddenly became a creature of pure bedding. You can call me Sheetface. So what makes this show especially bad? I mean, aside from the bad animation, the lack of character development, the liberal use of science and logic, and the stilted dialogue? Well, for starters, it's full of holes! 
There's this one scene where the motivators ward off the vampires by letting sunlight into their subterranean lair, but look at this next shot. Whoa! That machine is history! Where did the sunlight go? It's just as dark as it is the rest of the time. Also, Dracula infects a bunch of cars so that they become vampires too, and... they never show up again. This episode ends with him in the process of infecting an army of vampires, and they're never brought up again. Why? And you remember that big wheel dog thing I mentioned earlier? For some reason, the meteor turns everything it touches into some variety of vampire. Yes, even the motivators are technically vampires, except they just drink gasoline straight out of the pump to keep their vampirism to themselves. But what about the big wheel? It came to life because of the meteor, but it doesn't have any gasoline thirst whatsoever. Why? What does it live on? Why aren't they studying this thing to learn its secrets and find a way to make it so that the vampires don't need to live off of gasoline? And now comes the big question that I'm sure is on everyone's mind. How exactly does this epic struggle between man and machine come to an end? I don't know. No, seriously, this show didn't really have any kind of overall story arc in mind when they started out. It only lasted one season, surprise surprise, and the last episode shows the vampires and the motivators fighting a T-Rex skeleton that was also brought to life from the meteor. Yeah, this meteor has all the same poorly defined life-giving properties that the Allspark has. Go figure. They end up defeating the monster, and... That's it. That's all there is to this show. No epic battle to the death, no defeat for the vampires, no grand victory for the motivators. It just kinda peters out. And that was the vampires, I guess. It was dumb, it was choppy, it was forgettable, and it went absolutely nowhere. And this was actually a donation from my roomie, who bought it at the 99 cent store, and she was overcharged by about 8 bucks for it.